Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our weekly devotional uh, here at the Silver Bay YMCA. Uh, my name is Garth Allen. I'm the spiritual life director here. My colleague Bruce Tamlin, our chaplain, is here as well, and Austin Porth, who shoots the videos for us. Uh, we're grateful you've joined us today. You may have guessed we are on the Irk, uh, down right here, surrounded on three sides by the lake. And we're super excited to be outdoors in the sunshine uh, sharing this devotional with you today. Uh, we're going to do, uh, as I always say, we're going to do three things. We're going to pray, we're going to sing, and we're going to hear a message uh, that Bruce has prepared for us. So uh, we just invite you to settle in and uh, we pray that God gives you something uh, that you can hold on to from our, our time together today. Bruce, would you like to say anything? Sure. Uh, thank you, Garth. What a beautiful day to be here at the Irk and the opportunity to look, uh, you know, south on the lake over to Slim Point and north on the lake up to Tower Point and all of Silver Bay in between, sort of sandwiched by uh, Sunrise Mountain and uh, an Inspiration Point over there, which are just glistening uh, today. So we are so grateful to be with you. Thank you for joining us. And we hope what we do today uh, is meaningful for you and, and uh, uh, brings you closer to uh, to, to your faith and to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to say an opening prayer and then we'll uh, go right into Bruce's message, but let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this day, this moment uh, that we can be together through this technology, through uh, a videotape that we can experience Silver Bay together. Uh, we pray as we uh, look at your word as, as Bruce speaks to us, that we would be open uh, to what you might want to say to us uh, through this time together. Uh, we ask that you speak uh, and give us ears to hear, uh, that we, whether it's through the music or the word uh, or the prayers, that, that somehow we would each be touched uh, by your spirit uh, after having spent time together today. Uh, we thank you for Silver Bay and for uh, what it means to each of us on our spiritual journeys. We ask your blessing upon it. Bless our time. Uh, we pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So uh, before I start my homily, I thought I would just take a moment to uh, say a little bit more about the man behind the camera. Uh, Austin Porth has just done such wonderful work for us. Not only Garth and I and Spiritual Life, but all the departments are relying on him to produce all of their outgoing videos and messages, and he is in high demand. I, I wanna tell you a little bit more about Austin, and I, I asked his permission to do this. So um, Austin uh, has been coming to Silver Bay his whole life, every summer, um, and is a member of the McFeely family, um, a large, beautiful family that have been part of Silver Bay for many generations. Uh, Austin has been an emp for over 10 years uh, and you've seen him on the stage in our summer production so many times, just has talent uh, uh, in so many different areas. After being an emp with us for, for 10 plus years, uh, he went full time on our staff in February of 2018 as the uh, conference setup coordinator and uh, did a beautiful job with that, keeping all the conferences um, uh, uh, handled with all of the arrangements they needed, and, and then uh, was promoted to now his position of digital media, media specialist in, in uh, December of uh, 2019. What a great hire that was, because we would not be anywhere without him in terms of that. So. Um, and there's a really special thing I want to tell you about uh, Austin and his family. Uh, Austin's great-grandfather, uh, Wilbur McFeely, was president of the World Alliance of YMCA's. Uh, this is the highest lay position, volunteer position in the YMCA movement uh, around the world. And uh, uh, Wilbur served as the president of the World Alliance of YMCA's, which has its headquarters located in Geneva, Switzerland. So one of our own here at Silver Bay, part of Austin's family, has been uh, uh, part of this worldwide movement uh, in that leadership role. So Austin, we are so grateful for who you are and what you've brought to us, and um, we couldn't have done this without you. So thank you, Austin. Thank you, Austin. So, um, 
I'd like to talk today about two, two scriptures, um, and the theme of this is I'm, I'm uh, calling Biblical Support for Coping with the COVID-19 Virus. Um, that's what we're calling this. And uh, before I read the scripture, let me give a little more context to this homily and what this is about. For about six weeks now, uh, we have here and you have at home been dealing with the changes brought about by this COVID-19 virus. Staying at home, social distancing, wearing masks, wearing masks, I think I have, I hope I have. Here's my mask right here. You didn't see this on camera, but before we started, Garth and Austin and I wore our masks down here. And if you go across campus, you'll see our staff in masks. So another thing that we've been dealing with, many people being laid off from work, no places to go, gyms not open, restaurants closed, friends getting sick, people dying in large numbers, the fear of strangers and the fear of even friends and family who might have the virus. It has all been a challenge. Not only that, but it's been covered 24 seven by every news outlet. You can't turn on TV or radio or whatever without just being bombarded with this. So life has really changed dramatically for us and become extremely stressful. And where I'm going with this is that all of these changes and restrictions have been taking a toll on you and on me, on all of us that way. And we are pretty, people are pretty stressed, pretty anxious, losing patience, emotionally struggling. And I've heard stories, and I'm sure you had too, of people really losing it. I, I was talking to a pastor just the other day who was in the post office in his community, and some man there just went berserk, you know, yelling at the clerk, postal clerk, and just it was a really difficult scene. Um, we've heard of meltdowns in their people in their homes and fits of anger and rage and frustration and being short with one another. Now, I haven't been short with anybody at all. I can just, I can, I'm only kidding. I've been short and I've been frustrated at times and I'm sure you have too. So we can speak the truth about this. But also addictions that were once under control are now can be re-emerging through the stress of all of this. So Many of us have been struggling and many of us experience moments of despair. Um, so the summary of all this, it's been a difficult time for so, so many people and so many of us. And what I wanna say about that is, is that be gentle with yourself. You know, don't, don't condemn yourself. Do the best you can in terms of that. Apologize when you've been short and, and uh, uh, own up to stuff in that way. But, but it has been a difficult time for us, for all of us. And so, let me suggest a couple of things. It is good to talk things out with a trusted uh, family member or a friend, uh, or even you know seek a, a teletherapy session with a counselor or therapist, and these may help. But let me suggest an additional source of support where I think there is great wisdom, and that is the Bible. And each week in our devotions, uh, Garth and myself have come up with different scriptures that we think um, would help and support us. And there's certainly a number of places in the Bible that bring insight and wisdom and comfort and support uh, for us during this difficult time. And I'd like to focus on two scriptures that I think might be helpful for us. And the first scripture is um, Psalm 46. And um, I'm going to uh, reach down for my Bible. Well, I have it written out here, so I'll read it here. But Psalm 46, I'm gonna read verses one through five and then verse 10. And my source of this is, and my reflection on this scripture is from Tim Keller's book, The Songs of Jesus. Um, so Psalm 46, the first five verses says this. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her and she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. 
beautiful five passage, five verses there. And then, of course, the most famous verse in Psalm 46, it's verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. Just a brief reflection on these two passages. This first five verses, boy, at times I feel so vulnerable to disease or injury, financial loss, to political betrayal, to professional failure. This is what we're going through now, the vulnerability to these situations that have come about because of the virus. But in this Psalm, you say that even the earthquakes and the mountains melt. That cannot stop the infinite love, the resurrection, the new heavens, and the new earth that comes in the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in our verse 10, be still, nothing, help us, help us, Lord, to come to know that nothing is truly solid or trustworthy and lasting but you, God. Nor can anything thwart you, God. No matter how bleak prospects seem, no, how, no matter how overwhelming the opposition, the city of God, the heavenly community, shines. And we cannot be harmed, but can only triumph. Why? Because the reality and the community are in God, and we are in God. So, these beautiful scriptures, I think, from Psalm 46, are helpful at a stressful time like this. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. We should not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall, the waters roar, and the pandemic spreads. Beyond all that, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. And be still means to not be anxious or fretting or frustrated or angry or despairing. For the truth is, God is with us. A good friend of ours, Dave Ingray, has written a song about Psalm 46 and verse 10. And then we would like you to hear this song because it captures beautifully what the psalmist is saying here. Dave has been coming to Silver Bay his whole life and he and his wife Karen and their three children live in New Jersey. So we invite you to listen to this beautiful song and then we will come back with some reflections on a, sec on a second scripture. Dave, thanks so much for this song. And 
all these things that are running around your head and they're keeping you up in the middle of the night are in my grasp there is nothing that can ever separate you from the love of Jesus Christ so just be still you don't need to fight The eagle sets its wings to rise above the storm on the very winds that blow. You want to run and hide. But when the thunder rolls, you can sing hallelujah and rise on eagle's wings and you'll know. I'll be by your side Still Be still Be still I know that I am God That is all you ever need to know just be still Just be still Still Be still Be still Be Dave, thanks so much for this beautiful song. It does capture beautifully what the psalmist has said in, in uh, Psalm 46, and we're grateful for you having written this and played this and shared this with us. Thank you, Dave. So where else can we find wisdom in the Bible to help us with our current challenges? I'm going to suggest that Galatians 5:22 to 25 is also a good source of wisdom and strength for us. This verse is known as the fruit of the Spirit. And so let me take a moment to read this verse for us. So this beautiful passage in Galatians we've used before at Silver Bay and uh, in Vespers and in a number of our services. And this is what Galatians 5.22 says. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, patience and kindness and generosity, faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And if we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. I think such beautiful words for this time, this pandemic time. These words from Paul to, the, to his letter uh, to the Galatians. There are nine positive traits that characterize uh, the Christian life that Paul lifts up in this passage. And before I look at each of those briefly, individually, I'd like to just offer uh, three or four general thoughts about this passage known as fruits of the Spirit. 
Now, when the Galatians received the gift of the Holy Spirit, they were given the foundation for their faith. And out of that foundation grows the fruit that provides this opportunity for us to grow into the men and women God has called us to be. And this fruit, which is captured in these nine traits, this is an opportunity for us to grow into the men and women God has called us to be, and also at this time to bring the seeds of this fruit during this pandemic strongly into our life, to have them anchor us. You see, with this pandemic, it offers us such a great time to bring these seeds to full, to full power and fruition that way. The second thought here, notice that Paul does not call it works of the Spirit or efforts of the Spirit. No, he doesn't say that. He calls it fruits of the Spirit. What this says is that the fruit is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, which produces the behavior in the believer. Rather than something the believer tries to acquire or achieve or accomplish or whatever, no. This is a gift of the Holy Spirit. We've been all given these gifts. The seeds of these gifts are planted within us. And it is our relationship with Jesus Christ that allows these seeds to flourish and grow within us. And I can't think of a more important time than now to have these seeds show their beautiful life. The third thought, it's also important to understand that the fruit of the Spirit is not just for us as individuals, but also intended to characterize the behavior and the character of the wider community. Like your church community or a community that you might be a part of at home or a community like Silver Bay. And we hope that you find the Silver Bay community to be a place where you experience the fruit of the Spirit. And the fourth idea here uh, as a preliminary um, uh, look at these uh, nine traits It's important to know that the fruits of the Spirit are different from the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are given to various Christians at various times according to the will of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is spoken about in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verses 7 through 11, which speaks about the gifts of the Spirit. But the fruits of the Spirit, what we're talking about now today, they are manifest in Christians all the time. And in this way, biblical scholars have talked about the idea that the fruits of the Spirit are more important than the gifts of the Spirit. Now, both are important, but... So let's take a look at each of these nine traits for a moment that Paul speaks about in this passage. The first is love. And this is clearly the signature quality of the one one who is living a Christian life and the centerpiece of a Christian community, love. This is where the love of God, the love of our neighbor as ourself, this is the central core of the Christian faith. And it is through love that we come to serve one another. It's through our love. And we know through Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, which you've heard at weddings and so many other opportunities, love is gentle, love is kind, Paul writing those words, you can see how important those, his concept about love for for Christians is so central and the key quality of our life and why he listed it first. It's the first of these nine qualities, these nine traits. And the Greeks give us four words for love, and we've spoken about this before, so I don't want to go into this long at all, but philia, friendship love, Storge, family love, eros, romantic love, and agape, God's love, which is overarching all of these other three loves. So this first one, love. Let us know during this pandemic that we can rest into love, the love of God, the love of our neighbor, and the love of those around us. The second fruit, joy. 
Joy for Paul is not something that is produced by circumstances or earthly pleasures, but rather is generated by the indwelling spirit. And so it can be manifested often in spite of one's circumstances or health. This kind of joy involves a future looking attitude that has hope and brings hope to our life. It's a hopeful way of being. And this says something also to us about the current circumstances in this pandemic. Let us hold on to hope. Let us hold on to this inner sense of joy that doesn't have to do with the circumstances of the pandemic, but has to do with the indwelling Holy Spirit, the Lord within us. The, the, the words that Paul speaks to us about joy is that indwelling spirit. May you, may I, Garth and Austin and us here at Silver Bay know that deep inner sense of joy that God intends for us. The third is the, the, the third fruit is the gift of peace. So the, sorry, don't mean gift. The third fruit is peace. Now the Hebrew concept of peace is captured in the words, in words like serenity, a quiet mind, the absence of, of disturbance. And the Jewish concept, by contrast, has to do with sort of a sense of personal wholeness, a healthy sense of relationship with ourself and others. And both of these are important when we think about living an abundant life. To be at peace, not always easy during a time of pandemic, but I think about the man in the post office who was raging, Lord, bring him a sense of peace. You see, raging at the postal clerk or acting out, that's not lifting up this fruit called being at peace. So may we be at peace through this pandemic. And the fourth fruit is patience. And I know Garth and I have talked about this a lot. Um, patience is the endurance in trial and hardship. We all have trial and hardship at times like now. We need such great patience. And it's also having sympathy and understanding for our brothers and sisters. Let us be patient. Let us show grace with others that seem to be so thrown off by this pandemic. Let us love them and be patient with them. The next three, Paul mentions kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Now kindness means being merciful and forgiving. Kindness, what a beautiful quality for us to show kindness. You know, I was at a funeral some years ago and a good friend of mine said there are three words to describe my sister. Kind, kinder, and kindest. She was just a beautifully kind person. That certainly captures this idea of the Christian life, kind. Goodness means seeking opportunities to do good to people around us. Goodness, serving, being of help, being of service, taking care of, supporting. What an important time for us to show goodness to one another. And faithfulness. Faithfulness being, means being faithful and reliable. I can't help but think in this pandemic to show up in such a reliable way as a father, as a mother, as a sister, as a brother, as a YMCA employee, as somebody of life. Let us show up reliably each and every day to give it our best, to wear our mask, to take care of ourselves, to take care of others, to buy groceries for those that can't. Boy, this sense of goodness just bursts forth at a time like this during this pandemic. And then the eighth fruit, gentleness. Gentleness involves being gentle, no, not only in our outward behavior, but also in our inner, inward spirit. Inward gentleness is the same as humility. This is the most delicate of the fruits of the spirit, and it can easily perish. One of the hardest things for a person to overcome is pride which is the chief enemy of gentleness and humility. We don't usually, we, we usually don't even recognize our pride, but it's always a bit present. 
And if we think we've overcome it, that merely proves we haven't. I know this one and maybe you do too. And the final fruit of the Spirit is self-control. This means placing our old self under control of the Spirit, our new self. My old self, losing patience, acting out, being angry, being short with somebody, being at odds. Let me know the discipline of self-control. How can we tell if the fruit of the Spirit in our lives is fully ripe? We can tell by the same means we use to tell if any fruit is ripe, by squeezing it. As long as our circumstances are happy, it's easy to be a Christian. The fruits of the Spirit in our lives may appear to be completely ripe, but it's only when trouble comes, when we're squeezed, and as I said at the beginning, we are squeezed a lot right now. There's a lot of squeezing going, a lot of testing going on of our faith. And when our fruit is squeezed, what kind of juice comes out? The bitter juice of hurt or pride or the sweet juice of love and joy and patience and humility? Our lives, all of our lives are being tested right now. We are being squeezed. And may you and may I know that what is coming out of us are these nine beautiful traits that Paul has spoken about. Love and joy and patience and humility, kindness, goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. May you, may we, as we continue to deal with this pandemic, know of these nine qualities, these nine traits that Paul speaks so beautifully about. May we know them in our heart. May we be able to live them out. May we have the, the, um, the, the insight and the wisdom and the care and the compassion to be able to live in such a way that the fruit within us comes out in a way that just speaks to others about what the kingdom of God is really about. So, blessings to you. Thank you for listening. Amen. As we always sing, please join me. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And let's, let's pray together. <clears throat> Gracious God, we thank you uh, that you have given us many gifts. Uh, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit within us uh, that guides us uh, to cultivate uh, these gifts of the Spirit, um, these fruit of the Spirit, excuse me. Uh, Lord, we know that uh, fruit needs to be cultivated and it grows and, 
Uh, it doesn't just appear miraculously. It takes time to uh, ripen and be ready. And so we pray that uh, we would be willing to allow your spirit to work within us uh, so these fruits can become evident in our lives uh, in those areas where we really need to uh, grow. And so we thank you for this challenge from Bruce. Thank you also for the challenge to be still. Uh, one might think it's easier to be still in the midst of this pandemic, but I find myself, I may be sitting still, but uh, my mind is active and distracted by so many things. And so help us to find uh, space and time to be still before you, to listen to that small voice as you whisper to us, as you teach us, as you help us to grow. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who answers prayer. And so we ask uh, for this pandemic, we ask for healing uh, and wholeness for the people impacted by this deadly disease. Uh, we ask that people would uh, come off ventilators, that, that doctors and nurses would have wisdom to treat people, uh, that the researchers would find uh, the right treatment uh, methods, whether that's uh, drugs or pharmaceutical items, whether it's uh, a vaccination, Lord, we just ask for uh, the researchers to come up with something to uh, eradicate this virus. Uh, Lord, we pray for our leaders. We think about uh, the world leaders, uh, the World Health Organization, and uh, those around the world who are struggling to help their people uh, as they deal with this pandemic? Would you give them wisdom? Would you give them insight? Would you give them strength? Uh, Lord, we pray for our national leaders. We pray for our president, for our Senate, for the House of Representatives, uh, for the judicial system, for all the ways that our government works, uh, that you would be guiding and directing, uh, that you would work in and through these people uh, to provide uh, what is needed for those people in our country who are suffering, uh, whether it's suffering because of the illness or suffering because of job loss and uh, failure to make money so they can't make their payments. So many people are in all sorts of pain, and we pray that that, that would be alleviated. Uh, we thank you for the leadership here at Silver Bay. Uh, we do ask that you would uh, provide what is necessary uh, that, that you would uh, bring healing so that uh, this summer and this fall we can uh, enjoy the beauty of your creation here at Silver Bay, uh, that we can uh, connect in the community that is so vital here uh, in order that we can live out these characteristics that Bruce talked about, the, the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, Lord, we love you. We thank you that you are a God who draws near, uh, that you are engaged with our lives, and that you care Help us to uh, show that care for those around us, uh, to our families, friends, neighbors. Help us to be the hands and feet and voice of Jesus. Uh, we ask all these things in his name. Amen. And Lord, we pray for all of those that are watching this video. Um, some are alone in their apartments or homes. Some are with family. Some are needing food, some are restless, some are struggling with issues. Lord, we ask that you'd be with each and every one of us, that your healing touch, your guiding hand just be placed upon us, that we remember of your abiding love for us, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, and that each and every one of us would know this. Lord, we just lift up this prayer to you as we pray this in your name. Amen. And so for our closing song, I'd like to sing this beautiful, we're outdoors in the beautiful uh, space here. I'd like to sing this song, God of the Sparrow, God of the Whale. Um, and I'm going to need to just uh, get my guitar pick because it blew away in the wind. So I, I, I found it and uh, we're ready to go. God of the sparrow, God of the whale, God of the swirling stars, how does
does the creature say ah? How does the creature say pray? God of the earthquake, God of the storm, God of the trumpet blast, how does the creature say woe? How does the creature say pray? God of the rainbow, God of the cross, God of the empty grave. How does the creature say grace? How does the creature say thanks? God of the hungry, God of the sick, God of the prodigal. How does the creature say care? How does the creature say thanks? God of the neighbor, God of the foe, God of the pruning hook. How does the creature say love? How does the creature say God of the ages, God of the hand, God of the loving heart. How do your children say joy? How do your children say home? Thank you, Bruce. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're grateful that you've spent this time uh, with us watching this video. Again, these uh, devotional videos appear each Wednesday at noon uh, on Facebook and YouTube, and we ask that you check in then, or if you can't, watch them later. Uh, pay attention to Silver Bay's social media, uh, to our website for additional programming uh, that will help you connect with us uh, while we're apart. And uh, we're grateful for all of you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you here real soon. And then I just want to say what a joy it is to work with my colleague Garth and Austin. I, my heart is full uh, when we have the opportunity to do this. And I hope, we hope your hearts are full where you are and that the joy of, of uh, being with family or friends, uh, the joy of knowing of God's love for you is present where you are. Uh, we so feel it here and we hope you so feel it there. We very much enjoy bringing these to you. Thank you so much for watching them. Many of you have commented on uh, uh, to us about them. Thank you for that. And we look forward to continue doing this. So God bless. Take care. Bye now. Bye-bye.